Hello, everybody. Matt Feldman. Um, we're uh, here. We are on July. No, it's June. June eighteenth, and uh, we're going to talk about tiny habits. This is kind of not as a concrete topic, I guess is the best way to put it, as some of the other topics we've done. Um, and it's a new topic. It's not something that I've I've done for any of the uh, pre-conference workshops. This is a topic that it, it really kind of fell on my lap. My wife got into this book by B.J. Fogg, um, and she's, actually, it's got a little covered, you can see it better now, but uh, we're always both kind of like in self-improvement phase in my house, and uh, it's a little bit annoying, I'm sure, for my children. I, I feel really terribly for my daughter, Ella, who's on the line with us today, um, and all my other children, because we're always doing self-improvement stuff, but anyway, she she got this book and handed it off to me and I started reading it and I went, aha, because we, I go to these, I go to the meetings and I talk to um, other independent consultants and I particularly talk to a lot of um, independent consultants who are just getting started or, or want to get started. And, and the, and I just don't know if I have the advice for them because they ask me things like, what am I supposed to do now? How am I supposed to meet clients? How am I supposed to get started? And I tell them all the, the concrete things like, well, you need, business organization, you need to set your fees, like we talked about last week, you need to track the time, um, you need to do marketing, here's the basics, but they, invariably, I, I just don't give them enough information, and I'm thinking to myself, what else can I do? So, um, I started reading this book, and I said, here's perhaps the answer, I think it was great, and so I, I incorporated this into the e-study, and I thought it was I think it's great. I, I want, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. So I'll actually have a chance to chat with you today um, and talk about it. But what we're talking about today is The Tiny Habits by B.J. Fogg. And so that's the same book I just showed you. The Tiny Small Changes. How do you say this? Tiny Habits, The Small Changes That Change Everything by B.J. Fogg. So um, I want to start by doing one small habit. When he's looked at um, all the habits that he's helped people take, and he's got literally hundreds of thousands of, of points of data of habits that people have taken. One third of them come down to this one habit and he calls it the Maui habit. So when people wake up, the first thing that they do is they put their feet on the floor, which is a trigger for them to say to themselves, today is going to be a great day. So what I'd like for you to do right now is lift your feet up off the floor. Now put it back, pretend you're waking up, Oh, you turn to get out of your bed and you put your feet on the floor and I'd like you to say, today is going to be a great day. All right, let me test you. How many people actually did that? Where's my, where's my, uh, of course, I'm not gonna find it. There's too many buttons on my computer. Anyway, I was gonna put up a poll. Hey, yeah, there you go. Thumbs up if you did it. I love it. Thanks, Mattia. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Nina. Anyhow. My point is, is, I just wanted to see if you actually did it. I was kind of, there's a poll, I push it, but I just can't get to the buttons fast enough. All right, anyway, so the point is, is um, you are supposed to say today is to be, be a great day, and it puts you in the moment, and it gives you a, a, a great um, emotional start to the day, and today I did that. I, I, I put my feet on the ground, I said today is going to be a great day, and I kissed my wife, and I went about the rest of my day. All right, so let's talk about tiny habits. We're basically, this is a pretty basic calculation. We're talking about creating behaviors. So a habit is a regular behavior that we do. There's, of course, bad habits like smoking or heavy drinking or things like that. But in our context, we're thinking about what are some of these great habits that we can take on as independent consultants that are is going to facilitate what we're trying to do. Um, so maybe it's marketing. Maybe it's tra tracking our time, which I know both my coworker and I both have trouble with and we need to get better at, so we're trying. So we need some motivation. We either have high or low motivation, right? And we need ability. We need something that we can do. Um, and we either have um, high ability, like we're, if you we wanted to do a push-up, you may have very strong pectoral muscles. You can do lots of push-ups. You have a high ability or you're very weak and um, you have low ability and a prompt. And what we find is that the behavior equals the motivation times the ability times the prompt. 
okay? So let's think about this with regard to two dimensions. Um, first, you see that we'll put ability on the horizontal piece. On the left-hand side, you have low ability, or things are very hard to do. But on the right side, you have high ability. Again, thinking about a push-up. Um, okay, let me tell you a quick story. Um, again, embarrassing my daughter who's on the line with us today. Um, in November, a friend of mine put together a Facebook group who wanted to do for people who wanted to do 100 push-ups a day. Now, I couldn't do five push-ups, um, but I wanted to join this group. And, um, and throughout the month of December, we all basically got up to speed to doing push-ups. In week one, we did 25 push-ups a day, which was very hard, <laughs> very hard. In week two, for the four weeks of December, I did 50 push-ups a day, and then we worked up to 100, and I've been doing 100 push-ups a day five days a week since January 1st. Um, so I'm going to use push-ups as an example here. So push-ups for me were very hard to do. Um, I couldn't do I couldn't do five in a row. I had to take a, a break. It was completely embarrassing. Um, and uh, I, I would do it in the closet where nobody could see me, or in a room around the corner when nobody was there. But uh, it was very hard to me, for me to do. And um, it, it, so I had a low ability. It was hard to do. It's on the left hand side of this. Um, on the next thing. We have motivation. So on our vertical, we, we want to think about this as our ability, as our motivation to do it. I was I had a motivation because I've already committed to this through this Facebook group. I signed my name up, I put it on there, said I was going to do it. So I was motivated, I guess, just by peer pressure to want to do this. So um, I would find myself over here. I think you guys can see my mouse. Um, things were low, but my motivation was high. So the next piece of this is we think about the action line, right? In the action line, things that follow, fall to the left or below the action line are things that don't happen. So if I was, if, I, if somebody asked me to do 100 push-ups a day and I had not done any push-ups at all and I didn't have the peer pressure, I would fall down here. That was something very hard to do and I had low motivation. Well, anyway, what I found myself doing was signing up for this group of friends who all said they'd do it. And for the most part, they were all about at the same physical level as I was. Um, and they all wanted to do it, but we were going to hold each other in check. So I increased my motivation pretty high. And so as we move over here to the easy to do, um, I would do something that was um, relatively I always get confused with this, but my point is, is um, by by increasing my motivation, I was um, I was encouraging myself to do to do something. So what we see is we have prompts. So the prompt is something that happens on a regular basis, something that happens in our life. The prompt that I used for us to start the day off with putting our feet on the ground. Um, that is something everybody does every day. We all get out of bed and put our feet on the ground at some point. We all brush our teeth. We all, we, a lot of us, I guess maybe not as much anymore, get in our car and drive to work, or at least we <laughs> walk out of our bedroom door and or sit down at our desk. There's always, there's so many things. We start a cup of, we start a pot of coffee or a Keurig. And I think that actually, that's a great prompt, by the way, because Keurig always takes about, it depends on what kind of machine you have but it usually takes somewhere between like um, one minute, two and a half minutes to brew that cup of coffee. And that's, some, that's when you could be doing something. But anyway, so when, when you uh, have a prompt and you, ha have, you identify something that's easy to do and you have enough motivation, those prompts will succeed in creating a behavior. You have a high enough motivation and, the, and you have a high enough ability that the prompt is successful. So that's why you see the little smiley face. On the other end of things, you have prompts that fail. If you have a low ability, um, or it's, it's very hard for you to do, a push-up, uh, 100 push-ups is very hard to do, and you have low motivation, those things are gonna fail, and they're gonna be down there. So this is um, BJ Fogg's um, model. 
Um, and you'll see, I, I, I put his name on all of this because this is all straight out of his book. He's offered it up completely for free for us to, to, uh, to talk about and for me to teach it. He, in fact, he has whole appendices on how to teach this. So he's very, very free with his information. Oh, quick side note. B.J. Fogg is a faculty member at Stanford in the psychology department. And he, I think the name of his lab is the Motivation Lab. Um, he only teaches one day a week, but that's because um, he's the guy who's worked with all the Stanford startups. And, and if, you, if you think that you, have, uh, you know people who are addicted to their smartphone, well, he's the one who taught um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, on how to design their apps so that they're, um, they're sticky or they're usable or people can't help but go back to them. He's, <laughs> he's actually worked with ethicists now in each of the departments because he realizes the problems that they, they created with all of it. But all of these ideas are the original ideas back in the early 2000s, 2007, you see it here, that he used to help inform the people who were developing iPhone apps when the iPhone was coming out to be very successful. So what we're talking about, I can tell you, is very successful because we're all now addicted to our phones and we're trying to get away from that. Anyway, so let's talk about the anatomy of tiny habits. So things become tiny when you do something that's easy. So if you're trying to learn to do push-ups, you might start by doing two push-ups after a prompt. He uses the example, and he, this is his real example that's in the book, and he talks about this in his um, in his uh, TED Talks. He started doing push-ups every time he went to the bathroom. I can't imagine him sitting in the bathroom doing push-ups, but maybe he does. Anyway, he would go use the bathroom, he'd flush the toilet, and that would be the prompt, because you, we all have to go to the bathroom at some point, and he would go and do two push-ups. Now, two push-ups was easy enough for him to do, and so two push-ups became four push-ups, which became six push-ups, and now, as he put it in his TED Talk, He's doing about 80 push-ups a day. Um, so for me, um, I, I didn't know about this model when I started doing my push-ups, but I did do something like this. I would I want, also wanted to start reading. So I would I was reading books, not unlike this book here. And every time I'd get a couple, I'd read two pages, I would sit down and I'd do 10 push-ups. And then I would be able to do 100 push-ups in a short amount of time, but without having to do 100 all at once, which is really complicated. So that's the basics of the, um, the, the fog model. Let's talk about his anatomy of tiny habits. So our prompt is effectively an anchor moment. And so these anchor moments are things that happen all the time. I've already said, like getting out of bed, taking a shower, starting your shower, right? The, the water isn't warm enough for you to step right in right away. You've got that depending on how fast your water warms up in your bathroom, somewhere between 15 and um, two minutes before your shower is all warmed up. Um, so you've got that anchor moment, something that's going to happen. He lists uh, phone ringing or brushing your teeth. So I think a lot of people want to learn to floss. So when they brush their teeth, that's the prompt for them to floss. Um, or if, you're, if your phone dings, you check it to see if you've gotten a, a Facebook post from a friend. In fact, I just had a prompt just while we were talking. My, my, my uh, watch vibrated, and it was some friends of mine telling me about planning for a, a, um, an event that's coming up. So I was, I was prompted, probably inappropriately, probably need to find a way to turn that off, but I was prompted to look at my watch. So when you're trying to create a behavior, you've got that anchor moment or that prompt, and then you do the behavior. And then, and this is important, and I think this is the part that's hardest about all of this, is we need to find a way to celebrate, that we need to create instant celebration. It's not like we're gonna wait later and we're gonna make cookies and, and celebrate with our family because you know we flossed our teeth this morning. When you, when you do it, oftentimes it's just a, um, some sort of uh, a way of making yourself feel joyful inside. Some people will go, yes, or, I'm a winner, or maybe it's just inside. You, you say to yourself, you, you just give yourself that, that sunshine moment, that glow that occurs. Like, see, now they're all texting. I'm taking off my watch before I get too distracted. Um, but that celebration helps reinforce it. In fact, it is oftentimes the reason why we are able to develop our habits 
um, our good habits in ways that are sticky, that happen. So let's see here. Um, we've got an anchor moment, then we have a behavior, then we have instant celebration. So that's the A, B, and C. Anchor, behavior, celebration. Um, and so when we're thinking about this, he talks about tiny habits as like seeds. Um, we're trying to plant seeds in, in fertile soil where they will grow. So um, we have the, if we have the right um, formula and the right um, soil, those anchor moments will grow into habits. Um, doing two push-ups after you use the bathroom can turn into four push-ups and six push-ups and can create some overall healthiness about the way that you go about your day. So he uses these recipe box, recipe cards. And again, this is his tiny recipe, tiny habits recipe cards. Um, after I, I will, then I will celebrate. Your anchor moment, things that happen all throughout the day, getting out of bed, going to work, sitting down at your desk, opening your email, going to lunch, um, things that are, are happening on a regular basis. After, and the example he uses here is after I sit down to work, I will turn off notifications for social media. Ironic, because I'm getting social media notifications right now. And then I will celebrate. I will say something positive to my inside. Um, a habit that I have is squeegeeing the shower each day. Um, and I know this is gonna sound crazy. I'm not sure I've ever told this to anybody, but I've always been impressed by um, Japanese, um, the sand gardens the, where they use the rakes and they do the beautiful little shapes. Um, and it's such, seems like a, a quiet, um, methodical, meditational kind of an activity for them. And so I don't, I didn't like squeegeeing my shower, but every, but I sh every time I shower, I take special joy in doing a very slow squeegee. Even sometimes when I'm really busy and I'm really stressed out, it helps settle me down. So I'll squeegee the shower very slowly and I try and do it very purposefully and perfectly as much as I can. Um, and then I feel like I kind of put myself at peace with myself. And so in many ways, that peaceful thing that I do is effectively my celebration and it's not a bad way to start the day. All right, so how does this, um, impact our independent consultants. So here's some examples. Daily, after I wake up and put my feet on the floor, I will say, it's going to be a great day. That's just a great way to start the day. And that's the one third thing that people do. So some other things that consultants can do. After I arrive at work, I will identify one new contact to make today. So a lot of people are looking for new ways to expand their work, right? They wanna develop new clientele. They wanna reach out and do more work that they're already very good at. Um, there's a, a list here. I'm gonna let you read through them. I'm just gonna say a couple more. After I finish a large project, I will make a list of new opportunities. After I meet with a new client, I will write up a follow-up email. Um, Mattia just asked if I can send, it, send us these slides. Yeah, I, what I do is I leave all these slides and I put them out on a, on a shared drive and then I share, share that drive out with everybody. So make sure you contact me if you don't already have that, Mattia. Um, and I also put this, these, uh, this video out on YouTube for people to check it out. All right, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wrap up here. There's a, this book is great. Um, I think it's one everybody would enjoy reading. Um, I actually read another book that has similar themes, and I think if you finish this book, read it, read it a little bit slowly because he just goes into so many different things. He talks about um, thinking of different ideas and grids, and there's, he's certainly a psychologist, um, and um, he goes into a lot of complicated themes that I think he's trying to keep simple, but there's a lot of them. Um, another book that I like is James Clear's Atomic Habits. Um, it's another idea, a lot of similar ideas, some differences there. It's not, it's proven, but it's not research-based like, uh, like BJ Fogg's, but I think it's a good one. 